Hello folks, welcome to my YouTube channel, Watercolor Impressions. Last week I was traveling uh, to Vancouver and I was at Pearson Airport which really inspired me to do this tutorial. Before we go, hit the subscribe button so you guys can get weekly video updates from my channel. And uh, let's get started guys. As always, I will provide the drawing template and reference. Uh, check my video description so you guys can download it. Uh, from the video description um, as always uh, when it comes to drawing i uh, tend to uh, make things really simple and arrange shapes in a such a way that it's really good for composition but whenever it comes to drawing or uh, whenever you're uh, doing new subjects i always make sure to not to draw from your head because as humans we tend to see shapes every day because we know what car looks like so we try to draw from our head and uh, which looks totally different when we put on a paper uh, when we're representing in a 2D uh, image. So we solved our first step, uh, 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 we finished our drawing. So let's put our first wash. The first wash, it's going to be evening scene. So there's going to be a lot of gradient in the sky. So it always starts with the cooler wash to the warmer wash. So you could see at the top, I'm using cobalt blue. As it comes down, I use a little bit of green and a little bit of yellow ochre. As, as it comes down, I went with the orange. And uh, it looks really strong now. I think uh, it's gonna dry out pretty uh, light. So I'm, I might be glazing over at the end. So, and I'm taking uh, the sky, connecting the ground plane using uh, French ultramarine blue, uh, or you can use neutral tint and a little bit of cobalt blue in it. I wanna make sure that it doesn't look uh, uh, that blue or that cool. Because I wanna make sure that it looks a little bit of gray because it doesn't uh, reflect that much from the sky. Uh, because since it's evening, so there's not going to be that much reflection uh, on the ground. So as it comes down, uh, I want to uh, put some uh, warmer wash. So in a tra any traditional painting, if you see, uh, the cooler colors go uh, in distance and the warmer colors uh, come in the foreground. So that's the only reason I just want to uh, warm up the wash in the foreground. I want to make sure that it also creates a beautiful lead-in as well. I let the wash dry for a bit now. Uh, let's focus on the background now. When it uh, comes to background, I try to keep it really simple as possible. Um, as a matter of fact, when I started painting, um, I used to spend a lot of time on my uh, background. I used to fuss with it. Um, and later I realized that uh, background serves the purpose of being a background. Uh, you don't have to put uh, thousands of details there. I'm going a little bit darker on my background because uh, there's a lot of lights um, in the background in an airport. So that also creates a really interesting element in our painting. So as you could see, I zapped that uh, background really fast uh, without uh, fussing about it. It's just a simple stroke with a little bit of colors uh, at the back. So I want to connect the background with the aeroplane, uh, which is at the all the way at the back. And I'm trying not put that many details for the plane since it's going to be the background. So now I jumped onto the uh, mid-ground airplane. I'll put a little bit of details. I won't, I won't uh, add so much details on the plane. So what this creates is it also creates a little bit of uh, depth because um, if you see in any traditional painting or any kind of like really good paintings, um, the foreground element have a lot of details. As it goes in the background uh, to the mid-ground and the background, the details get lesser and lesser. So that way we can also create enhanced perspective and depth in our painting as well. So now uh, I finished the mid-ground uh, plane without any fuss. And there is also one element which is on the left hand side, uh, the wing. That also creates a little bit of uh, uh, leading element for the foreground element, uh, the foreground plane in the foreground. So I'm going to start with the engine. Uh, um, this is just to see uh, where everything goes. Uh, this is uh, to see, I'm just trying to kill the whiteness of the paper for my plane. And being said that, I'm being aware of the colors which is underneath it. And uh, since it's a really evening scene and uh, since like um, airplanes reflect a lot of things from the plane because it's a reflective material for the planes. So I'm leaving some white bits here and there for the reflection which is coming from the left hand side. So which is called, so called as a rim light. And uh, as I said, I left a lot of white bits. So you could see this comes in handy. So that act as an eyelids from the sky and from the, uh, from the sun. So now I jumped onto uh, 
the plane uh, which connects to this thing which people walk uh, I don't know what this is called but uh, this is where the passengers get on it and uh, go inside the plane and I'm also adding that this also add as a, like a really interesting element so I can add it so in the reference uh, as you could see there's a lot of uh, interesting elements happening um, there's uh, thousands of things in the reference but I minimized in such a way that uh, it comes to fewer shapes so we can focus on uh, each and everything um, because i have done painting painting everything in a reference and it does look horrible but um, as a painter you're telling a story and you have to create a story in a such a way that it's simpler so uh, so that the message is um, really simple to uh, read and understand so this is the tackle thing and um, i'm going to try to um, keep it as a shape Whenever I paint stuff, uh, really um, sophisticated details in my painting, I try to keep it simple uh, because um, sometimes uh, your brain doesn't understand and you can be fussing with it and you make it uh, really horrible as possible. So I try to keep it simple. Uh, I'm a big fan of simplifying stuff and I learned this from my one of my favorite artists. Um, so this is the tail end uh, for a foreground plane and uh, I'm just trying to um, leave some, put some details there. Uh, this is where the white bit uh, where I left came, comes in handy because um, as a painter you have, to, uh, you have to see your finished product while you're painting. That helps to uh, organize your shapes and that helps to organize your composition as well. And um, this is the passenger way where people uh, walk. So I'm just going to put some details here and there. I want to make sure that I don't uh, over uh, detail it because I want the focus to be on our plane. So our, the plane is our uh, focal point in this painting. And you can also see I also added that um, yellow strip at the bottom. This is where the strain stands. And uh, I'm also adding the bottom part of the plane now, and uh, this also creates a form for our paint, uh, form for our plane. In any kind of painting you do, uh, your shapes have to look 3D, and it should have uh, these three major things. Uh, it should have a light, and it should have a mid value, and it should have a darker value, and it should have an highlights. So the reason being is whenever you create uh, shapes like that and it gives this 3D look and it also gives an illusion of impressions of 3D when people are seeing this painting from far. And uh, I left that white bit. I'm also adding a little bit of that um, yellow cobalt blue on where the highlight happens because uh, if you see in the reference the transitioning happening from cobalt blue to a little bit of warmer color. So now um, the background uh, dried a bit so I'm going to add a little bit of darker pigments at the background because so that we can put uh, um, highlights and lights uh, at the background so I'm trying to add the shadows and the details I left in the in the mid-ground plane uh, I'm, I'll go and uh, I'll fix that as well so here's the bit uh, which uh, paint by itself uh, that's a beautiful thing about watercolors so I wet the paper and now I'm putting down colors uh, for the shadows, uh, this is going to act as our uh, mid-ground, uh, mid-value shadows. Then we're going to introduce a little bit of darker pigment. And you could see as soon as we added the detail and uh, the old plane anchors on the ground. And you can also see in the reference, so this is the another uh, value I'm talking about. So before it dries out, I'm going to introduce a darker pigment underneath it. So that will create a softer uh, transitioning shadows uh, for our plane. So now I'm taking white paint and uh, this is just to uh, bring back the highlights um, I missed uh, while I was painting. So this is to just to bring uh, wherever we could enhance lighting a little bit better and make things pop. And uh, I'll keep doing this uh, white paint till I'm happy. And you could see um, I'm keeping it really minimal. Uh, sometimes I overwork with my white paint and um, and you can see in the reference and you can see uh, this is another thing I missed uh, while I was painting uh, the foreground element. So this is I'm adding just to because um, I want to show a little bit of scale. And now it's your turn. Take my drawing template and reference and uh, let's see what you can come up with. If you ended up painting, uh, please share with me and like to share with my subscribers. Thanks again for watching this how to paint airport video tutorial with me. 
Let me know what you guys think about this video in the comment section. If you want me to cover any other subjects in watercolors, uh, write me at watercolorimpressions at gmail.com or comment below. Before you go, hit the subscribe button so you guys can get uh, weekly video updates from our channel. And uh, please do share uh, with the friends and family. And uh, good luck with your painting folks.